Whether you can take your consciousness and put that into some kind of electronic, you know, um, bioengineered type of environment. Over a hundred year time span, you would have a new body completely, in principle. And then it might be immortal. Is it desirable to, to be immortal? I, I'm, I'm convinced that not. Wow, short life, that's an interesting question. Why would you live a shorter life? I mean, uh, there are, I mean, obviously organisms like mice, uh, a small mammal, their, their typical lifespan's two to three years, and, and they age over that period as we age over 80 years. So their metabolism's very similar, and their, their lifespans are very much shorter. So in, in those organisms, the lifespan Span is just compressed. There's a, a, a similarly sized um, small mammal called a, a mole rat, and, and that typically lives to be 30 years. So the, there are very unusual paradigms in terms of um, how aging can be compared to human aging. There tends to be a trade off between reproductive capacity and longevity. And what you tend to find is in model organisms, the organisms that reproduce a lot don't live very long because they have a limited energy potential and you can either invest that in producing lots of offspring at the expense of basically wearing out your body more quickly or producing fewer offspring and living longer. And humans have kind of gone towards, much more towards, the fewer offspring investing time in living long enough to be able to bring those offspring up and look after them. Aging is a mechanism to stop us essentially getting cancer. And so if we didn't have a general decline and senescence in cells, then we'd all die quite quickly and succumb to cancer and die quite young. So you have a trade-off. So you have to age to be able to, to bypass and, and, and combat cancer. Aging is basically a metabolic deterioration of cells so that uh, when, when a cell is first born, it divides from a stem cell, so a stem cell will divide, and one of those sister cells will repopulate the stem cell population, and the other sister will continue to proliferate and repopulate the tissues that the stem cell is actually the progenitor for. So as those cells continue to divide and perform the function of the differentiation lineage, they will gradually acquire more and more damage. And it's the damage within those division cycles that leads the cell to lose its ability to provide normal function. And that eventually has pathological consequences and the cell will die. Or even worse, it can change into some state where it doesn't die and then it will cause disease. A lot of institutions are spending huge amounts of money trying to treat disease. And so we focus on treating cancer, treating arthritis, atherosclerosis, all kinds of degenerative diseases. But all of the degenerative diseases are driven by basic aging mechanisms and understanding what causes people to age. And if you could have a very, very modest extension of global health span, so if you could take the time that a population is healthy and just extend it by a few years, that would have huge financial and social implications. So you would globally save trillions of dollars for society just by shifting the, the, the health span of the population a little bit further along, which I think has, is, is really important and not a lot of people really realize that. I think from a biological perspective, our bodies just break down over time. And it's very, very difficult to think how that can be addressed. I think, you know, there are, conceptually, there are people who talk about 
out, you know, taking everything away from the body and whether you can take your consciousness and put that into some kind of electronic, you know, um, bioengineered type of environment, which would be, you know, very extreme. By maintaining those, or by understanding those mechanisms, of course, you have a chance to hopefully interfere in some of them. And this then can become applicable if you think of, for example, new degenerative diseases, where obviously you have a much quicker aging process, if you want to see it that way, because you start accumulating these defects much sooner. And uh, of course, if you can prevent those and can help to overcome those, this will be a question of, of, of uh, life quality and increasing life expectancy. I don't think it's necessarily desirable to extend life beyond what is a normal human lifespan. But it's about providing better life quality as long as you live. So make aging healthier. There are, there is, there are certainly animals that you can trace that appear to be immortal. So there are things like jellyfish, where you can cut off a piece of a jellyfish and it will um, regenerate into a brand new jellyfish that will have very few signs that it's aging. So you can just keep cutting these jellyfish and they'll keep regenerating. But they're very... They like form two jellyfish? Yeah, so you could cut a jellyfish in half, you'll get two jellyfish and they will not age. You cut them in half again, you get more jellyfish. Obviously in the wild they get eaten, so they don't live forever. Um, and generally it's very simplistic organisms. So these are very simple organisms that have that capacity and the more complex you get, the more likely it is that you're going to have major aging. I mean, immortality is a, is a fascinating subject. I, I think at the present time, no, because the concept of immortality is that you have a, a mechanism of overriding aging completely and therefore can live forever. I think in, in the 100 to 200 years time span, it might be possible using present developments in regenerative medicine and stem cell medicine to continually repopulate an organism so that you're fundamentally replacing parts of it uh, in a perpetual way so that in essence, what you originally started with as a body is able to grow as a body forever. Whether that's immortal is a interesting discussion point. Emotionally, you're probably saying you're changing every part of it, so it's probably not the same body you started with, although the framework work may well be the same. This regenerative medicine stuff is quite intriguing. And in principle, these days, we can do it through a stem cell route and in principle could gradually replace the body over a hundred year time span, you would have a new body completely, in principle. Then it might be immortal. That's a philosophical question, and is, uh, is, is an intriguing one. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of overriding the philosophical purpose or biology of life, you know, what, we talk about the biological purposes reprocreating and, and the sort of passing on our gene pool. And I think the sort of immortality goes substantially beyond that. And uh, from my, my perspective, I would think it's a, a very dangerous thing to contemplate, actually. I think one day it might be possible, but at the moment I think it's uh, very dangerous. So is it, is it desirable to, to be immortal? I, I'm, I'm convinced that not. And I, th I think the best example of that is uh, the book by Simone de Beauvoir, um, Omena, Mortal, uh, where she explains quite nicely what it would mean if you live forever and what would be a logic consequence on the, on the uh, just judging from the basis of our, of, uh, of our psychology and, and, and the way that humans are designed. Um, it doesn't look like a desirable goal. You know, we're designed to have c continuous generations. And if, if you live forever, then that has major implications in terms of reproduction and, you know, limited um, resources on the planet. So having an aging population anyway is a major, major problem socially. And 
we almost all almost all populations from different countries are aging exponentially. And so that means in the next decades, there are going to be big, big problems. Ashes on the ground, ashes kindled our desire, turned our feelings into fire, our passion only spread the flame.